Why hello lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. In today's edition of Math Mondays, we are going to dive into probability. Woohoo! All right, here we go. So just a reminder, this is part of our Schrodinger's equation analysis, but since quantum mechanics is really dealing with probability, it's pretty important that we understand probability from a very strong foundation. I've also gotten a request to do this topic in general, so I'm gonna split this topic into three different parts. This first part is hopefully gonna be a short and quick overview for a simple example dealing with candy. Woo, candy! The second video is going to dive into a slightly more complicated topic, and uh, that's also going to allow us to talk about things like average and median. And then the third video is going to look at what it means to have a continuous probability distribution. So for this example and the second example, we're gonna talk about things that we could sit and count, like candy. We can sit there and count the actual candy. But for continuous distributions, we have a spread of things and it's hard for us to pinpoint and count all of the things because they're spread out continuously. And if you're like, what? Watch one, two, and three. Cool, okay. So we're gonna use candy, because one, candy is delicious. Most of us like candy, and it's a thing that we can count and understand the differences between. So when I was a kid, I used to save my Halloween candy all year, and when my friends would come over, we would dig into the bag and eat candy, even though it was January, February, March, whatever. It would last me a long time. I was pretty good at saving it. So let's say that a friend comes over and we want to dig into the bag of candy, but we wanna really know what is the probability that we're gonna pull out a certain kind of candy. And for fun purposes, let's say that we grab an oven mitt and we blindfold ourselves so that we can't cheat and try to feel the type of candy uh, depending on the bag that it is in. So here we go, that's our setup. And to start, we know that we have three Twix left, seven M&Ms, five Snickers, three Starbursts, and two Twizzlers. And since this is my bag of candy, having two Twizzlers left probably means that I got two Twizzlers at Halloween and have not touched them since. Some of y'all might like Twizzlers, not me. Okay, and the next thing that I would recommend doing anytime we're dealing with probability is draw a picture if you can, or plot a picture if you're dealing with a lot of data. So this is what my picture would look like. And I, I drew it so that we have the least number or the, yeah, the least number pieces of candy to the most. So we have Twizzlers, which is two, Twix, three, Starburst, which I'm writing S-T-R for short because I want to be lazy and also save space. And then we have Snickers, S-N-I at five, and we have seven M&Ms. So right off the bat, having a picture is really, really handy because we can see what we're working with. In dealing with probability, typically the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is add up all of the total number of things that you're dealing with. So in this case, we are dealing with pieces of candy. So the total number of pieces of candy is just the sum of all of them. So we have two Twizzlers plus three Starburst plus five Snickers plus seven M&Ms plus three Twix, which is going to equal 20. Seven and three is 10, two and three is five, and then five is 10. So we have 20 pieces of candy total. Okay, and then once we know that, we can start asking specific questions about our bag of candy. Very important. So let's say I reach in there with my oven mitt I wanna know the probability that I'm gonna pull out a Twix because it's my favorite piece of candy. So then I could say, okay, what is the probability, or P for short, let's be lazy, what is the probability of pulling out a Twix? Well, there are three Twix out of a total of 20 possible pieces of candy. So that means that we have three opportunities to pull out a Twix out of 20. And to simplify this into probability terms, we divide uh, three by 20 to get 0 0.15. Or if you like are like me, I like to think of probabilities in terms of percentages. So it is a 15% chance that I will pull out a Twix from that bag of candy at random. Okay, that's pretty cool. But let's say I'm like, eh, I'm kind of just feeling, you know, chocolate with a little bit of something. So maybe I want 
the probability of pulling out a Twix or a Snickers. So in this case, I would add up the two probabilities. So instead of just three, I also have five Snickers that I might get. So we add up three plus five. I'm gonna try and write straight maybe. And then we divide that by the total number of possibilities. And so we simplify as eight over 20. And so in this case, the probability of getting a Twix or a Snickers as I've opened up my uh, palette a little bit, is 40%. So four times out of 10 or 40% of the time, if I randomly reach into that bag and pull out a piece of candy, it's gonna be a Twix or a Snickers. I can also ask what is the most probable piece of candy? If I were to reach in the bag and pull out a piece of candy, what is the most likely candy I'm gonna pull out? Well, just by looking at this plot, we can say well, seven because there are seven, or sorry, M&Ms, because there are seven M&Ms, which is more than any of the other individual pieces of candy. So if I were to calculate what the probability of getting an M&M would be, I could say probability of M&Ms, that was a funky way to write an and sign, is gonna be, um, that is equal to, it's gonna be seven over 20 or 35. Okay, so this is all fine and dandy, but this is really specific to my bag of candy. What if you wanted to apply this to your own bag of candy? Or something that's different than candy, maybe something that's healthier, like fruit? Well, the general formula for figuring out the probability of a specific thing is this equation. Probability of that thing, in this case, like the probability of that type of candy, equals the number of those things, so in this case it would be the number of those types of candies divided by the total number of things that you have. So that is a very important equation. And uh, I also want to say, okay, what is the probability that I will not get Twizzlers? So I'm like, fine with everything else in the bag, but not the Twizzlers. So I want to make sure that I'm not likely to get a piece of Twizzlers. So I can say, what is the probability of not Twizzlers? I'm gonna write Twiz for short. So if I look up here and I say, okay, the number of pieces of candy divided by n total, but I don't want Twizzlers, so I'm saying not Twizzlers or not these two. So what I would do is I would say, okay, well, the number of not Twizzlers is just the total number of pieces of candy, 20, minus the total number of Twizzlers. So that would be 20 minus two divided by the total, which is 18 over 20, which is 90%. So 90% of the time, or if I were to reach in the bag nine or 10 times, nine out of those 10 times, I would not get Twizzlers. Pretty cool, right? Yay for probability. If I had more Twizzlers in the bag relative to the other ones, the probability of getting a Twizzlers would go up and I would be a sad panda. Or I would just invite my friends that like Twizzlers over and be like, have at it until they dwindle the Twizzlers down and then I am happy, they're happy, we're all happy. Okay, and this is where I check my notes to make sure I didn't forget anything. Okay, cool, so those are the two most common equations. And then the last thing that I wanna mention is that when we're talking about probability, the reason why I like percentages is because it's Percentages are really clear that we're talking about something between 0% or impossible. So for example, the probability that I would pull out a Sour Patch or SP for short is zero because there are no Sour Patch candies in my bag of candy, at least not anymore. Maybe I ate them all. So now it's impossible that I will get a Sour Patch from this bag of candy. But the probability that I will get some candy like I'll say probability of a piece of candy. That's uh, very hard to read, but probability of some piece of candy is 100%. So assuming that I can actually grab things with that oven mitt, it is 100% likely or it is certain that I will get some piece of candy. I might not be stoked about the piece of candy that I pull out, but I will pull out some piece of candy 
because it is a hundred percent certain that there are some things in that bag and I will pull out one of them. So that's why I like percentages, whereas uh, decimals can be a little bit confusing because decimals uh, can also, you know, be, be less than zero and greater than one. Um, but when we think about it in percentages, at least for me, it helps my brain to recognize that, okay, 0% is impossible and we can't get anything less than 0%. We can't have anything less than impossible, probably. Um, and we can't have anything more than 100%. We can't have anything more certain than certain. So percentages put some nice bounds on our understanding of what is possible. Okay, so that's it for our simple example. Again, let me know if you have any questions and check out part two and three. Yay!